Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before we get started, my name is Joel Nicholson Shanks. I'm the outreach manager here at Contra Costa College. Let's give a round of applause for yourselves for showing up. For the advisors for making this event happen. Shout out to WCCUSD and every other high school that we have in the room. I just want to take a moment to soak this in. I don't think you guys understand. We have black students from all over the area right here in the same room that came together for this just one event. Sorry about that. This is not common. I went to Howard University. If you don't know, that's an HBCU. Shout out to Howard HU. This is what my life looked like on a daily basis. I woke up to this. I lived this for four years, five years. So this means something very special to me. My goal and my hope is that you guys all leave here knowing somebody that you didn't know before, that you get the chance to socialize for, uh, with someone from a different school, a different district than you. So please, don't be shy. Please engage with the person next to you. Please use the time at lunch to socialize. Don't be dry, right? That's what I want you guys to remember. Don't be dry because we started this event when we first did it. You can see that right there. It was the African American Male Symposium. We had roughly just 90 students. Looks like we push in more than 200 today. So again, I am excited to be here. We got a lot of great content for you. But before we get started, let's get fired up one time. Is El Cerrito in the building? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Is Deanne's in the building? Yeah. Uh, that was better. That was better. Do we got the K in the building? Oh, the K not even in here, man. Do we have Kennedy in the building? Was that your advisor louder than you? Oh, they shy. It's all good. What about Pano? Pano, y'all can do better. Oh, y'all came live, man. That's what I love. Richmond High, where you at, man? I got anybody from middle college in the building? Y'all know I graduated from middle college. Y'all probably didn't know that. So shout out to middle college one more time, one more time. I know we were supposed to have Summit K2. Did they make it? No, they did not make it. They're not here yet. So we got more people to expect. So just to throw that out there. John Sweat, where you at? They in the back somewhere. They, yeah, they here, though. They here. Shout out to them. Am I forgetting the school? Am I for, what school am I forgetting? Hercules, where you at? All right. So you can see that we have students from all over the area going from, what is that, Albany coming all the way back to John Sweat. What's that, Crockett? And so today should be a fun, exciting day. So now let me get started. I have the pleasure of introducing our student host. You ready? What you got a backpack on for? What you about to teach or something? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I got the pleasure of introducing our student host. I had the opportunity to meet him. This is his first semester here. He's learned a lot. You can tell he learned how to dress from us as well. He's very spiffy today. So let's give a round of applause for my guy, Jabari Washington. What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, quick little introduction. You know, like, my name is Jamari Washington. Uh, this is my first year at Contra Costa. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is my first year at Contra Costa. I'm, uh, I recently just moved out here. I'm from uh, Chicago, south side, so. I just moved out here. I mean, it's been it's been pretty cool. A lot of energy out here, and uh, I also I'm also a student ambassador for the BSU. So you know, we work with a lot of a lot of black people. A lot of black people we work with. Also, uh, I'm gonna say like my right now I'm a business major. I might switch it up. I'm currently thinking about switching it to tech. You know, that's like my end goal right now, and uh, playing football. So you know, probably like landing a scholarship and then doing some tech on the side. But uh, yeah, that's, that's like pretty much right now, as of right now, that's like the end goal right now with CCC and everything. But uh, yeah. How y'all doing? doing? Shout out again for our student, student leader. Appreciate you, man. Welcome to Contra Costa College, first of all. 
welcome, welcome, welcome. In a few minutes, we're going to play the, uh, uh, a greeting from our president who couldn't be here. She's at a conference. I know Joel was showing up talking about he went to Howard. Okay, I didn't go to any of the fancy HBCUs. But I am from Liberia, West Africa. Come on. So you might have gone for four years. I got years and then some of just waking up to people that look like you every day. We want to welcome you to Contra Costa College. And now I'm going to play a video from our president, Dr. Kimberly Rogers. Good morning, African American Male Leadership Symposium participants. I'm Dr. Kimberly Rogers, Acting President of Contra Costa College. While I'm disappointed that I cannot join you today, I am there with you in spirit. The world can be a challenging place these days. Inflation, uncertainty, underemployment, pandemics, violence, they seem to lurk around every corner. And as Black people, these issues affect our communities sooner and more seriously than other communities. But if you're here today, you're a student at Contra Costa College, or you're considering it, I hope that you can find a home away from home at CCC, a place where you can explore your interests, passions, have fun, make lasting friendships, meet mentors, or perhaps most importantly, learn to critically question information you receive. We have academic programs in a variety of subjects, in African American studies, STEM, and you'll have the, the ability to study in your community with other students of African descent. Contra Costa College can prepare you to transfer to a four-year institution, enter the workforce directly. We also offer travel abroad opportunities, and honestly, too many other possibilities for me to list. I know you'll enjoy a wonderful program today and all the hospitality this wonderful team has to offer and will leave you wanting more. Once again, thank you for joining us today, and I apologize for not being able to be there with you in person. Thank you. So we want to thank Dr. Rogers for making that video because she really did want to be here with all of you. Um, we have been doing this now since 2018, 19, and every year it gets bigger and better. And we could not have done this without your amazing counselors. So give a shout out to your high school partners, <laughs> counselors. There are so many of us on campus who have been committed to this work for a very, very long time. Um, Joelle and I, we, we came into this under the leadership of our now retired athletic director, Mr. John Wade, who we expect him to be here at some point, but Mr. Wade had this vision about bringing people of African descent together to find ways to have a conversation about how to be better together. We didn't say be better apart, being better together. That's an important concept because a lot of times we focus on me. There's a Kiswahili word called Boma, it means village. I come from a village of millions. And, I'm, and as we walk into this room today, the most powerful thing about this space is this village of people gathered together. I'm gonna say whoo with you one more time. I don't think you realize how important this, this opportunity is. You know, Joel said he went to an HBCU, so he got to experience it for four years. Um, like I said, I'm from Liberia, West Africa, and so this, was a, this is an everyday existence for me. Uh, the thing about this, uh, this opportunity is, we're here to remind you about your own value, because sometimes, we forget that we have value ourselves, right? Sometimes the world tells us something about ourselves that isn't quite true, and we forget who we are and focus on what someone else says about us. 
this event is designed to bring that, to dispel that notion about who we are as a people. Every day we wake up, every day we, we get ready for school, we, we go about our day. The one thing that we all have in common is that the world envies who we are because of our creativity. Every one of you here have brilliance that you're sitting on, and when it does come out, people get jealous about who you are and what you are giving them. And so this is an opportunity to try to, to begin the conversation about exploring those gifts. Because we know that many of you here are going to do something amazing. My entire life, people were telling me how brilliant I am. That's the advantage that I've, I have growing up in a place like Liberia. Nobody told me that I was a minority. And then I come to America and someone says, oh yeah, the minority students, and I'm like, you don't lost your damn mind. I was never born a minority. And that's what we want you to take away from this conversation today. You are not, I repeat, you are not a minority. The people who tell you you're a minority, that is because they fear the power that you have with inside of you. People who have power know it because they don't have to tell you they've got power. Someone recognized we have power, and so they decided, oh, I'm going to remind them that they are less than. Now, if you believe you're a minority, then you have a deficit that you now need to work from. I have assets upon assets. In fact, in case you didn't know, all of you are part of the assets that I'm talking about. All of you and your play cousins, your cousins, your actual cousins, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your pastor, your rabbi, whoever it is that you connected with, all of those people are your assets. And today's, today's symposium is about making sure we, we remind you to harness that, that asset that you have. Because it's that asset that lets you know that you are not less than. That you are in fact greater than what anybody else has been telling you for the last however many years you've been on this earth. Like I said, I have the advantage of living in a place where everybody looks like me. And I recognize that that gives me an advantage that many of you may not have because you grew up in a diverse space, and that's okay. Did they just turn on the sun? <laughs> Hold on. Why y'all gonna do that to us? Your word, bro. I, see? Well, just so you know, like he said, that's, those are my words. We are light, people. We are light. Now, I don't know if somebody was messing with us, but they recognize that we are light. So, we're going to, if y'all don't, if I had a camera to just show what y'all look like, y'all just shining right now. Now, but we are grateful for all of you coming out here today. Uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have great speakers come up and talk to you. Um, one of the first speakers to come up is... Uh, is a dear friend and colleague of mine. Uh, he, you, you know, things come full circle in life. When you, when you start your careers, you get to meet people along the way that help shape who you are, what you become. And, one, and our first speaker is one such person. Um, I came to the U.S. in 2001 as an international student. Hold on, I don't lost my, did I ever introduce myself? What's my name again? Yeah, that's what I thought. I know I didn't introduce myself. So my name, and I, and I was told several times, you better say your actual name and all the things that go along with it. My name is Dr. George Godfrey Mills, Jr. And I am the interim dean of students here at Contra Costa College. I have been here now for eight years. Um, 
But again, I, like I said, I'm going to introduce my, uh, I'm going to just talk about the first speaker. We're going to have a really good time here. Um, our first speaker is going to be uh, Jeffrey Benford, uh, my, my, my good friend from Los Redondo College. is going to come and just give us some words of wisdom. I have known Mr. Benford now for going on, oh, well, yeah, we old, so we, we're not going to talk about how long we've known each other. Um, and then we're going to have someone come, uh, uh, Mr. Joe Frank. He's on his way. Uh, Mr. Joe Frank works at Wells Fargo, and he is a financial guru, and he's going to talk about um, our relationship with our finances. Uh, many of us do not. Culturally, as a people, we do not have a good relationship with our finances. And just trying to break that from, uh, from it being... Did somebody just do that again? We, we're just going to keep shining. That's all right. Uh, but Mr. Joe Frank is going to come and talk to us about our relationship with finances. And then we're going to break things up a little bit. We're going to break things up a little bit. And uh, we're going to take a group down to our fireside hall and have a conversation about developing a college-going mindset, and then we're going to have the, another group stay up here, and we, the ladies are going to do something together. Uh, but all of this is designed with you in mind. Now, the thing I want you to do when, when you leave here today, um, especially if you're, if you, you know, if you're, a, you're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, we're going to have this again next year, but we need your input. One of the things that I always worry about is we put, we put on events for students without your input. So as you leave here today, think about what was missing from what we're talking about here today. Help us so that we can be prepared for the next event. We need your input, so please, when you leave here today, share with us how we can be better together. Share with us how we can be better together. So, having said that, I'm going to turn this over to my partner in crime, Joel Nicholson Shanks, and he will lead us the rest of the way as I prepare for the next speaker. All right, let's give it up for George Mills. Apologies for that. We got one more school that's about to come. We're going to fill up a couple more seats just to throw that out there because Summit pulled up pretty strong, if you ever heard of it. But I realized something. I forgot to give out my gift cards, right? I forgot to give out my prizes. I'm sorry to fire them up before you go, but let me, let me knock this out really quickly. Hopefully I don't have too much stuff in my pocket. All right, so at this event every year, we like to give out a lot of things. You can see we already had, uh, gave everyone shirts. I hope you rep Country Costume, you put those shirts on. But we also like to give out gift cards. You can see I have some candy, my prizes for anybody who participates. So if you ask a question, you'll get something. If you ask a great question, you'll get something better. If you ask a question that get us all thinking, you'll probably get some money. All right? I got an easy question. I have a hard question for you. I think my first thing, let me see. Here we go. Anybody driving here? I don't think we have anybody that drive when it comes to a student. Oh, we got a couple. Oh, man, it's a new day. That's what I'm talking about. Legally, drive legally. I should have said that, huh? All hands go down, huh? Oh, OK. None of y'all got a license, though. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bring it down, bring it back, bring it back. My first gift card. Y'all know this is Richmond. Y'all know the big store in Richmond. Walmart is right across the street. I got this $50 Walmart gift card that I have to give out first. But I got a question that I need to ask. Please don't, all hands don't go up at once. I'm going to try to keep it even, keep it fair. I guess I'll get one guy, one girl. My first question, see if you were paying attention. Dang, you took, you going, see, now I can't even ask it. So, anybody knows what concurrent enrollment is? Hopefully you all know what concurrent, oh, middle college cheating. Y'all see that? Hey, cheating. I want to know, how much does it cost a high school student to take a class at Contra 
Costa College. You caught me. What'd you say? I can't hear you. Can you, can you say it louder? She's she not saying it loud enough for me. All right, there it is. I got you. You can pass that back. Make sure she get that. Make sure she get that. Don't keep it, please. So, so I'm going to, I called on her. <laughs> I got y'all. Y'all go here. We know it's free. Y'all, I got you, though. I'll get you something. So it is free. She was going to hit me with the fees because it is some fees that you have to pay. I, I see. I know y'all was trying to be technical over there. I get it. But it is free for you to take classes. Reason why I'm telling this. As mentioned, I graduated from Middle College High School. When I graduated, I had more than 50 units. I transferred those 50 units in. What I'm trying to say is when I touched feet, foot on Howard University, I was a second semester sophomore, right? So I came in as a freshman, but as soon as I touched Howard University, I was a second semester sophomore. I did that by taking classes while I was still in high school. So that means that I don't care if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, that if you want to get ahead, if you want to get some extra credits, if you don't want to take that class again when you get to college, take us up on that offer. It is free for you to take a class here. You just have to have it approved by your counselor and your parents, of course, unless you're 18. You said no? Oh, man. Oh, man, my guy in the back, can you stand up? I'm pointing to you. You see me? Can you say it? If I can't hear you from down here, though, you're not saying it loud enough. Dr. Kimberly Rogers. Dr. Kimberly Rogers. You want to come down here and get this? I'm going to leave it right here for you. <laughs> All right, I'll give one more. Is that PowerPoint ready? Is this PowerPoint ready? All right. My last question, I'm going to give that. I got a $75 gas card because gas is expensive. Gas is expensive. Woo -hoo. Man, I might answer this question myself. Just to be honest with you. All right. What is, I'm sorry, Middle College again. What is the name of our mascot? You don't go to Middle College, do you? You're not a Middle College student. Can you stand up for me, please? Can you say your name? Yeah, can you? No, no, it was you. It, what school? Valley. All right. And what is the name of our mascot? Comet. Comets. Woo! Shout out to her. So I have an option for you. I have a $75 Walmart card or I have a $75 gas card. Which one would you prefer? Walmart or gas card? All right. There it is. All right. So I'm going to give her that and we're going to pass it up. Remember, we're going to be giving out things all day, so it's about participating. It's about being engaged. Please bring it back down as I pass the mic to Dean Jeffrey Benford. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say thank you for um, this opportunity to George representing the, the planning team for this group. I want to thank George Dean, Dr. Mills, for extending me this invitation. Uh, Joel Nickerson, thanks. He actually worked at Los Madonnas for a period too, so I didn't get to know him long because he came back. And also the media folks over there making it happen. Give them some love. I am Dean of Counseling and Student Support at Los Madonnas. This is my second time being here. And, um, it's charged with, with uh, I went to Morehouse College, another HBCU. Martin Luther King is one of our alums, Spike Lee. Uh, the guy that does um, what's in your wallet, uh, uh, Samuel, yeah, Morehouse man. Um, there's a lot of us out there, uh, I also taught there. So I, I have an experience too of being in a place where, I grew up in Oakland. So when I went to Morehouse, I saw all of that and it was like, I'm home. And I thank you for that feeling that I'm experiencing right now. What I'm going to do with you today is maybe a little emotionally charged for some of you. So just bear with me. I believe you can handle it. But it, uh, I think this is something that's real. I know it's real. So what I'm going to do is talk about community. 
and your role in it. So the images you see may be a little, little strong, but just work with me and, and we're, we're gonna get someplace, because I, I trust, because ninth graders, any ninth graders? A couple, 10th graders? Oh, getting stronger, 11th graders? Ooh, 12th graders, represent. All right, I feel you. Any, anyone thinking of going to Morehouse? If so, hit me. That's an all-male school, what you doing? <laughs> Spelman's across the street, you can go there. Uh, if there's anyone that's interested in Morehouse, let George, let, let, you are? Let, let uh, Brother Mills know, and I will connect with you, on, if you're real, real. All right, check it out. Let's get cranking. This is a green light. San Pablo, what's it called, San Pablo what? Yeah. Avenue, green light. Gonna take, well, it's, the next slide. After, after the green light, let me show you what happens. Is that real? Watch this. So green light, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him Buddy Dude. All right, stay with me. Buddy Dude takes off in the crosswalk like that. Watch the next slide. He clearly is seeing that he's not supposed to walk. The next slide shows you what happens next. He honks, come on dude! Next slide, watch this. He's like, black lives matter. Next slide. He's like, it doesn't look like black brother sees his life as mattering. Next slide. He's like, I won't tell you what he said because I can't repeat it. But it was strong. It was directed at that guy, the guy you just saw, and it was profound and profane. But it was in defense. He said, blah, 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 but his life matters. Next slide. It's a green light, and nobody at the light is able to move. And you better know it. Yeah. So in this next slide, watch this. What is he thinking right now? What's he thinking? Give me, give me, give, come on, give me, give me, what? I'm finna get pulled over. I'm finna get pulled over. What's your name? Michaela. Michaela. All right. What else could he be thinking? What else could he be thinking? Come on, people, get in his head. What else? In the back, in the red hat. Come on, with the hoodie. Come on, brother. What is he thinking? Yell it out. What? I can't hear you louder, brother. Don't get arrested. Don't get arrested. Hmm. In this next slide, what is he thinking? What you say? He got arrested. He got arrested. Now let me ask you a question. You're at the light. You got some place to be. And Buddy Dude cuts across on the green holding you up, which may make you late. How are you feeling about that? No, 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 no. Right there. I saw it on your face. How are you feeling about Buddy Dude making you late? If you don't move out the way. If, she said, man, if you don't move out the way. Oh, oh, oh what'd you, what'd you, what would you say? Nice. Oh, you have nothing to say. What you got to say? Oh, so you see him and you late and you don't care? What, what? Come on. I'll be hot. Be I'll hot? be mad. How mad? Really mad. Real mad. What would you say? Yeah, what would you say? Don't say anything. I wouldn't say <laughs> She won't say what she would say, but you, can I say you feel some type of way? Yeah. All right. Here's my question for you. Is Buddy Dude walking in the cross rock when he shouldn't walk an issue? Can we agree on that? Okay. Can we agree on the fact, any other facts about that? Why is it an issue? Because what? That's jaywalking. Okay. So why is that a problem? Because it's illegal. And he's a black man. Oh! Are you equating black man with illegal? I'm just asking, you said, I said, are you, you said, he's a black man, it's illegal. I'm just asking, are you equating the two? Hold on, did you hear what just happened? When I asked her if she was equating black man with illegal, y'all went, oh, yeah. But it sounded like you were doing that. Are there some black people that see other black people 
who look like Buddy Dude as illegal? Oh, come on, who says yes? Yeah, look at the hands. Oh, put them up, put them up, put them up, put them up. Why do they think he is illegal? Because of what? Because of the way he what? The way he portrays himself. Because of the way he portrays himself. Okay. So his draw showing is a betrayal of what? A blackness? Draw? I'm black. I ain't got my draw showing. I do not have my draws. My underpants are not showing. I'm black. Usually when men are sagging, that like, it's stereotyped to um, thugs and gangsters. Stereotypes. You said usually when men's pants are dragged, it's a stereotype that they are a thug or, or a gangster. You said with the headphones on, you said, yeah, smile. All right, case in fact. The reason why he's walking across the crosswalk and not looking at the light is because he has a business with 5,000 t-shirts that he got to get out before the end of day. He is late, he left his phone, and he doesn't know what he's going to do because without his phone, he's like you when you leave your phone. He's a business owner, and he's made over $100,000 at his business. Yes, he is clearly not engaged in reality because he's got, he's got a business he's trying to push. And he for a moment forgot about all the other things. Do you think he thinks his life matters? Yeah, and you may be only one of his t-shirts. But the problem is that when you saw him, some of you honestly saw a thug. You saw a problem. You saw something to honk at, that's honest. The first thing I wanna ask you to do is this. Be honest about how you feel about us. Because when some of the hands went up, some of y'all were like, uh-oh, they're saying something we don't wanna hear. But the fact of the matter is, we don't have one brain, we have many brains, we think differently. And the first thing is to have a space to think differently. I saw some deep love in this. Hey, where, where, where's Nickerson with the money? Where, where, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Come back with that money, man. I want to give away some money. Where, where, where'd he go? Where'd he go? All right, here we go. Whoever can answer this question should get paid. There was a moment before I stood up when you all gave someone some love, as they would say. When was it? What was it? No, in this room. Yeah, in this room before I kind of stood up. There's something that happened during a question. What was it? Saying what? She got shy on me. Come on, folks. What was it? Come on. What was it? There was a moment. It was a powerful. I'll tell you, it involved an African-American male. What? George, when he was asking this question. Talking. What was the love? What was the love? Shining the light? That was love, I, but this, that's not, but I, that's, what? Also because he's from Africa and... Africa. To a student, I should have said to a student. It was a student that I'm talking about. Which, what is it? We're not minorities. No, a student did something, I'm saying, I'm sorry. A student did something, a black male student did something, and this whole place changed. What was it? Oh, what was it? What happened? What happened? What happened? He answered a question. And and got money for it. And got what? And got money for it. Almost. What did the room do? The room said, ooh. Ah, that was. When the brother in the back stood up and George asked him to get louder, he got louder, but he still couldn't hear him. I think it was Nicholson said it. But the whole room got quiet because you wanted his voice to be heard. If you miss that, you've missed the thing to get. That was you loving yourselves. Now, I don't know if his pants are sagging or not. It didn't matter. It was his voice, and no one said, shut up, be quiet. Another brother needs love right now. Let's give it to him. You just did it. That's something that black people do. We know where the love is needed, and we give it. We give it. You are clapping for yourselves. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you don't have the capacity to love. And don't ever let anyone tell you that you don't see everybody all the time. That's the power of what you just did. When I stood up, I was like, what do I do now? Y'all got it. And I wanted to point that out before I bounce, because I got to get to my job at Los McDonald's. Because in the larger picture of this, there's another screen. Push on. She was looking, 
And you know what she was thinking? You said Karen. What'd you just say? He said, that's Karen. What was she thinking? What? What, what, what? She was just thinking, I just want to go. This is so unnecessary. Like... Just thinking I want to go is so unnecessary. But here's the thing. Community waits for everybody to get along, to come along. We don't leave people behind. And the moment in which we do, we're not community because we need each other. And when white folks and black folks see each other as part of, hold on, part of community, we really win. Let me explain, and I'll close out. My first experience at Morehouse College was an English class that I was not doing well in because I was a bio major and wanted to be a doctor. I was spending time studying bio that I hated because it was memorization, just me, but the English class was exciting because I got to write. Follow me on this. I went to my advisor and said, I'm ready to transfer and leave my house and go back to California. I don't need this. She said, Benford, why? I said, because there are greens and hot dogs in the cafeteria on Friday. I don't want that. She said, did you come in for greens and hot dogs or for academic rigor? She was, she was Jewish, a white woman. I looked at her and I said, excuse me? She goes, no, you excuse yourself because until you come back with something that, she said, marshal your thoughts, Benford, and come back with something substantive. And when you have something about your education that is deficient, then we'll talk. I turned, walked out, and had hot dogs and greens that day. My lesson was what? From this white woman, what was the lesson? You know what I heard? I heard my mother's voice. My mother talking to me about, boy, be a man. Boy, know the difference between small things and big. Boy, make good decisions with the right information. Your hands up, what you got? It's not what you want, it's what you need. Ooh, oh, oh. It's not what you want, it's what you need. Give her something, brother. I don't know what that is. Well, I'll leave with this. I'm very encouraged about the way in which you all have practiced community today. Infirming yourselves. And the way it was, you asked, what group is missing to be inclusive? You caught yourself. That was inclusive, that was affirming. It's something that we do. And if you ever lose that, I submit you lose the thing that matters most. So when you're at the stop sign and Buddy Dudes walks by and he's got his music playing and you start, you know what you do, right? What you're doing is saying we're in community together. We're enjoying this together. Take those gifts as they come and you'll never fail. Thank you for your time. Keep looking for each other and ways to love each other. You've got it. You will win. You are loving people. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for Jeffrey. Our wonderful keynote, he also presented on fatherhood last year, so we definitely love him. Our next presenter has been a part of African American male leadership since I started. I don't know if you guys know, but we started this program four years ago. Um, and so because of that, I got to shout out Mr. John Wade. He's the one who brought us together to start this conversation. And from that conversation, look what bloomed. And so I want you guys to make sure that you fired up, that you're engaged, that you give your undivided to one of the best presenters I've seen. I learned a lot from him just watching him present, watching him interact, and he's pretty successful, right? You don't get, that, uh, you don't get the time often to talk to people who's made millions of dollars, who's invested, who knows about investments. And so please, please pay attention and please take advantage of his time. Let's give it up for Mr. Joe Frank. All right, thank you, sir. All right, let's give it up for Joel. So um, I'm gonna make this pretty informal. Um, my name's Joe Frank. I'm a senior financial advisor with Wells Fargo. Uh, I live in Orinda, but I, I choose to go to church in Richmond because it's very important for me to continue to support this community. Um, I want everybody to do this. Whoever brought you here or encouraged you, whether it's uh, Joel, uh, George Mills, Mr. Tim Banks on the electronics, let's just stand up and give it up for the people that got you here. Everybody. I mean, if you care, stand up. If you don't care, sit down. If you don't care, sit down. If you don't care, sit down, but if you care, Stand up. 
I still see some people sitting down. Thank you. So, Tim, those applause are for you. Delano, that was for you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop naming names because um, I'm going to forget somebody else's name. Kyra, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody, everybody, everybody. That was for you. That was for you. So, there's a Chinese proverb that says, when he drank the water, remember the man who dug the well. And the man is, it could be man or woman. It's not about the man. But when you drink the water, remember the man who dug the well. So, if that means you go home and thank your mom, dad, grandmother, big brother, whoever is helping you out, please do that early and often. It shows them gratitude. It inspires them. It makes them want to do more. If I know that the people I'm here to speak to, I'm having an impact, it makes me want to take time off of work, lose a few dollars, and I'm not complaining about that because it's having an impact. You guys with me? All right. A couple of things. Um, and it's, do me one favor. I'm going to ask you guys to look at your phones one time because there's a part of what I'm doing. Uh, hey, Tim, could, you, could we uh, turn this on real quick? So there is an app I'm going to need everybody to download while I'm talking. Uh, hold on one second. All right, can everybody go to your apps, app page and there, if you just type in the letter E, the letter Z, and financial calculator. Just E, Z, financial calculator, right? Um, and we're going to play a game. Uh, I'm going to give away a few bucks. And the reason why I do that is because it pays to pay attention, right? How many knows it pays to pay attention? Seriously, no joke. Um, I, you know, I, I went back and before I came to this talk, and I don't even want to quote you guys, but the discrepancy between skilled labor and unskilled labor is huge. Whether it's a college, and, and it's not only about college degree, it could be somebody in auto mechanics or whatever. So my wish for everyone here is they identify what it is they want to do in life and pursue it. You guys with me? So two, two things. One is it pays to pay attention. Two, I want everybody to learn and burn. Learn and burn. What do I mean by that? So I'm hearing some chatter. I'm hearing some chatter. Shh. Please. I'm hearing chatter. If somebody's next to you, flick them real quick. I'm serious. Somebody's next to you, flick them. All right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, learn and burn, what do I mean by that? So, so many times, I do this with myself. Wells Fargo will have trainings, right? If I go to a training and they're training on gold investments or financial planning or hedge funds or whatever it is I'm learning for my career, I don't just go there and go, wow, that's great. I learned a lot and then come back to my job and do the exact same thing. If I'm not prepared to use a little bit of what I learn, I don't want to go there. I'm not going to waste an hour, two, or two days at that training, right? All right, while I'm talking, who's got the EZ financial calculator app? All right. So the rest of y'all don't want to play for a little bit of money. Easy financial calculator. So just, if you don't have it, if your hands are not up, go to it. Don't be left behind. Easy financial calculator, right? I know y'all use your phone. Go to your phone right now. Easy financial calculator. And so one of the things we're going to be talking about is calculating your way to success. So I'm going to ask one question. I'm going to San Jose. If I'm 60 miles away, roughly, um, and I'm traveling 60 miles now, how long is it going to take me to get there? Who said an hour? All right. You said an hour, right? Okay. All right. I'm trying to pay you guys to pay attention, right? So it takes, well, hey, why'd you say an hour? Why'd you say an hour? Sorry about that. So you're driving 60 miles an hour, uh, it's 60 miles away. What if you drove at 30 miles an hour? How long is it going to take? Okay, two hours, okay. All right, two hours. All right, okay. 
You're paying it. What if you, what if you walk to San Jose at two miles an hour? How long is it going to take? Who said 30 hours? Okay. All right. Pay attention. Okay. So if you, I don't want to say silly enough, but if you had to walk to San Jose, the same trip that you can get there in an hour, and chances are we're, we're walking or we're driving at 65, 70 miles an hour. So you get there in about 50 minutes, right? But that same trip takes you 30 hours, take you over a day to get to San Jose if you decide to get on your feet and walk. And even if you speed walk at four miles an hour, you can keep that pace, it's still going to take you how many hours? Who said 15? Oh, man, you're paying attention. So how we got 15 is he took 60 miles an hour divided by four hours. 60 divided by four is 15, right? Y'all with me? Okay, so what we, what my job is, you guys should see this, right? So what my job is as a financial advisor at Wells Fargo, and my computer has a whole lot more than this to plan for my clients, but this is an app that everybody can get, right? So right here we have something called compound interest, right? So we're going to spend a little bit of time playing the compound interest game. So who got the app right now? All right, there we go. I like it. Who got the app? Okay, good, good. So we're going to play a game, right? And uh, anybody can win money if you pay attention. So we're going to go to compound interest real quick, right? So check this out. I don't care if you're flat broke, it's okay. So if someone is flat broke, I'm going to put in principal. I'm going to go to advance real quick. So if you're flat broke, you have zero dollars, right? Y'all with me? I'm flat broke, I got zero dollars. But, 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 watch this. I got a summer job. I got a summer job. And in my summer job, I'm making like 3,500 a month. Uh, but I'm spending 2,500, right? So I'm actually gonna do this real quick. I'm actually gonna do this real quick. So let's say I'm saving $800 a month. Y'all with me? Why don't you do this with me? So hit compound interest in the app. Who's hitting compound interest? Okay, cool, cool, thank you. All right, hit compound interest. Go to 800 monthly, right? Now I'm not gonna put it in Wells Fargo Bank, I'm gonna put it in Wells Fargo Investments. So I'm gonna make 8% on average, right? I'm gonna compound monthly. Make sure your compounding is the same monthly, right? And uh, the holding period, I'm going to say, let's just do this for five years. Y'all with me? And who's with me? All right, good. So um, 800 a month, 800 a month for 60 months, which is five years, at 8%. I'm going to hit calculate. I'm going to hit calculate. And um, again, one second, one second. Um, let me go back out, make sure I'm on this correctly. Principal zero, 800 monthly, deposit period 60 months, interest rate 8%, calculate. Um, I'm gonna do this on my phone, bear with me. I don't know what's going on with my uh, iPad. Hang tight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're, we're going to get this straight, squared away. Uh, I got the same app on my phone. Uh, give me one second here. All right. How, how good is the visual on this? Could you guys see this? Uh, okay, hold tight. Give me one second here.
just want to see something here. Yeah, what is going on? Okay, what, do me one favor real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem with this app. Uh, what do you guys have as, a, as an answer, by the way? So you have 36,000? Okay, give me one. We're almost there. Just be patient real quick. Give me one second, people. We're almost there. Yeah, go, go ahead. We'll, we'll... All right, so we'll take a moment while he's getting everything ready. Uh, please know I know it's getting hot in this room, and there's a lot of people in there, so if you do need to take a break, Feel free to step outside. The bathroom is right here on my left-hand side, so just go out this door and take a right. Um, our next workshop is going to be a breakout, so we will have less people in here just to let you know. Is that a, a question? If you get up and you leave, please try not to take someone else's seat, especially the ones in the front. If there is a seat next to you, let us know. But with that being said, like I said, I have these prizes in my hand. So while we're waiting on Joe Frank to get it together, I have one question for you. Are y'all listening? I like that you put your hand up. You ready, man? All right, so my one question. I already told you about concurrent enrollment. My next question is going to be, how much does it cost you to come here after you graduate high school if you came and you were a full-time student? You standing up, I don't know if, was that the signal? He was giving me the signal. Can you say your name? Can you say what school you came from, all that good stuff? What school? Kalia from John Sweat. How much would it cost you, Kalia from John Sweat? Is that the big zero, donut? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so you guys know, you guys could come here for free, save a lot of money. So please take us up on that one. Kalia, if you come down to the front, I'll give you a gift card right now, and I'm going to pass it back to Joe. My apologies here. My apologies here. Uh, that was user error. So I'll tell you all what I did wrong here is um, when you use the calculator, if you have everything in monthly, you want to keep it all monthly. So uh, we're going to do this example and then we'll play the game for some prizes. So we have 800 monthly, right? We have a deposit period of 60 months. We have an interest rate of 8%. So uh, the, holding period, for, holding period 60 months as well. My apologies. So what we got here, what we got, and I'm moving too fast, forgive me. So what we have here is um, bu, bu, bu. so we have total deposit is you know, let me clear this out. I'll I'll, I'll shift to another example and then we'll we'll be we'll be out of here. So we have eight hundred deposit holding period is sixty months deposit period sixty months interest. Interest rate, 8%. Make sure that's in monthly. So the, the eh, we're not using inflation here. No, no, it's 8% 8, it's 8 interest. Let me do one thing here. It is 8% actually. Okay. 
Uh, apologies here. So let's do it. So how many people came out with um, $49,000? Okay, good. Um, what I want to do is this. The whole idea of utilizing this app is this. And my apologies for user error. The whole idea of utilizing this app is if you're saving money, how many people want to buy a house? Good. If you're saving money to buy a house, half of the battle here is understanding the difference in terms of if I'm earning 1% in the bank or 2% versus 8%, right? Are you guys, who's familiar with rule of 72? We, we taught that a few years ago. Who's familiar with rule of 72? Okay, what rule of 72 says is this. If I have $100,000, right, and I'm looking to grow that $100,000 to 200000 72 divided by the interest rate, and we're going to do this a couple of times, 72 divided by the interest rate is how long it takes for me to double my money, right? So watch this. If, I have, if I'm earning 1%, 72 divided by 1, it takes 72 years for my 100,000 to travel to the land of 200,000. Y'all with me? What if I'm averaging 2%? How long? Right there. 36,000, okay. Let's, let's uh, could you come, uh, let's pass this up here. Why don't you come this way? Well, actually, we'll swim this up. We'll swim this up. Right. Swim that up to her. What if you're averaging 9%? Eight years, right? Okay, so I'll pass that up to her. So the rate of return, so I want everybody to remember this. Money's APR, annual percentage rate, equals the MPH of your money, right? APR equals what? So it's just like going to San Jose. If I go 60 miles an hour, I get there in one hour. If I go two miles an hour, it takes me 30 hours. So half of the battle of what I do at Wells Fargo for people is I'm helping their money move faster so they can get to their destinations, they can get to their goals faster. Y'all with me? Okay. A second application I wanted to do, and uh, my apologies for the user error on that, is this. The same app, if I go out to this same app here, um, we have something called the loan calculator the loan calculator. So what this loan calculator does is for the people that are trying to buy a house, right? Uh, what's, what's the house going for? Give me, give me some numbers. 500 might be a little bit low. Why, why don't we say 750, okay? All right, <laughs> so we're gonna say 750, right? So $750,000. Now, um, that $750,000 the, um, what is, so a couple years ago, the interest rate was really low. So you could pay, now the way compound interest works is it works for you and it also works against you. So if you're paying a mortgage, if the interest rate is higher, you're gonna pay a higher monthly payment for that house. Y'all with me? Okay, so a couple years ago, the, I'll do today right now. Today, the interest rate on a mortgage is 7.5%. And typically when you buy a house, you're paying, you're paying for that house for 30 years, right? So, if you have a $750,000 house at 7.5% interest rate, what is, the, what is the payment right here? Okay, so what I want y'all to do is this. The first person, so let's pretend interest rates went down, which they're gonna go down next year. There's a group called the Federal Reserve. They lower interest rates. They're gonna lower interest rates next year, starting around June. So let's say they lower interest rates to 3%. I need somebody to get me the answer on that real quick. The first person. Woo, right here, okay. All right, stand up. Stand up. Uh, go ahead and say it again. Okay. Thank you. So, 
What's the difference between 7.5% on the same money versus 3.5%? It's about $2,100, right? So one of the things that we'll do for that same customer is like this. Let me go back up here real quick. I'm going to put the 7.5 back in. So as a, as a financial advisor, hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, two years ago when interest rates were up higher, you were paying $5,200, right? Uh, now that interest rates are lower to 3%, we're going to do something called refinance, which is we're going to redo your loan. So you can have $2,000 more to put into your pocket for your kid's college for anything else. Y'all with me? Okay. So the, this app is called Compound Interest. This app is called the Loan Calculator. So these are little apps inside the app, right? All right, now the third one I want to talk about, I'm not going to go through all of these, right? This one's called Time Value of Money. I'm going to go advance. And uh, so if you have a savings goal, like let's say you said, hey, I want to get to 50 grand, or what's the savings goal? Who got a savings goal? Help me out. Anybody? Go ahead. 50,000. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you some participation money. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, thank you. 50,000. So, let's get you. Let's get you to 50,000 real quick. Um, hold on one second, 50,000. Actually, I got it, forgive me here. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm moving too fast. I'm excited to see y'all, I'm moving too fast. So what I need y'all to do, forget present value. Future value is 50,000. FV means future value. And what is that? That's your future value, that's your goal, right? Now. Um, again, you have to put in certain inputs, like 8%, right? And uh, present value, let's just say you got to put that in. Let's just say I'm flat broke, right? Flat broke, present value is zero. And I am doing this, um, let's just see, for a period we're going to go, uh, we're going to go 60 months again. Uh, but, but, but. Okay. So what I just did there, let me just show you. I'm making 8%, right? I'm making 8%. I have a future value of 50,000. I'm making 8% for 60 months. You know what this minus is, is how much money, and the reason why I chose this negative, how much money do I have to pay in to my investment, making 8% to get to 50 grand, right? So we're going, who's with me? All right, so we're going to play this. All right, I'm going to switch up the number, but I'm going to need you guys to get me the answer. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to say... All right, I'm going to say 75,000. I need an answer. Do, 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 do. Who has? OK. <laughs> Was that you? OK, she, OK, all right, all right. <laughs> OK, who, who had it to? Who? Joel, Joel, help me out, help me out. Uh, do me a favor. Yeah. Give uh, that one over there, over there. Raise your hand right there, right there. Raise. Your, there we go. So, okay. All right. Okay. So let me ask you this over here, over here. She. Hey, hey, you getting twenty dollars? So, so what? What'd you do to get the right answer? Uh, <laughs> I need better health than that. 
Who, who else had the right answer? Okay, what'd you do to get the right answer? All right, okay, so it's this simple, right? If you, shh, real quick, real quick, stop. Shh. And, and, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I really want everybody else to hear, so I'm not being rude. Forgive me. I just need everybody. Y'all with me? If you want the right output, you need the right input. Even I messed up earlier, and I've been doing this for years. So if you want the right output, you got to have the right input. So I want to talk a little bit, but I really want to, I'm going to cut a little bit short because I want to be able to answer questions. So I have $20 for the best question that comes to me, but in a second, one of the things I want you all to do is really think about your future. Whatever it is you do has some mapping to it, right? So I wanted to get here by about 1035. I cover a couple of Wells Fargo, P the two Piedmont branches in Wells Fargo. I do all the investments in those branches. I had to make sure I left that, P that other Piedmont branch by 10 o'clock because I want to get here on time, right? So what I want everybody to really do is have a clear sense about where they're going, the time, speed, and distance to get there, and what they need to do, right? Because when you get to college, when I went to UC Berkeley, there's a certain amount of units I had to take per year. It was 30 units. Now, because I played a sport, I ended up doing 13 or so units per year. I didn't mind doing it in five years because of the impact of my sports and athletics and traveling. We had to go to UCLA, USC, Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State, et cetera. So that took time out of my college career. So whatever it is you're doing, right, you really need to understand where you're going uh, and the time, speed, and distance, right? So if you're going to Sacramento, you got to give yourself enough time and also plan for traffic. You all with me? All right, we're going to do one more of these. We're going to do one more. And... Uh, I want to also just, like I said, open this up for Q&A because it's very important that you guys understand. Sometimes when we do these talks, um, there are plenty of things that people might be thinking about, and I want to just make sure I give a little bit of time back to you to ask any questions. Okay, so we're going to switch this up again. So um, we're still in time value of money, right? So we did the loan calculator, which I kind of messed up on, forgive me, uh, user error. We did the mortgage calculator, right, where you see the difference between 2.5% and, and, or 3% or and 7.5%. You guys understand that pretty well? So if you had a high interest rate and interest rates go down, what are you going to do with the interest rate? Who said refinance? Woo! And what does it mean to refinance your loan? Pass it back, Pat, please. Yeah, no. keep it. There we go. There we go. What does it mean to refinance your loan? It's, you're just restarting a new loan, but you're like, hey, I'm not trying to pay $5,200 a month. If I could, for the same house, pay $3,100 and whatever we had, and I can keep an extra $2,000 a month, now, guess what? I'm going to take that same $2,000 a month. I'm going to put it at 8% for 60 months, and I can calculate how much that's going to grow, right? So at any time in finances, is debits and credits. I'm trying to reduce the amount of debits. That's the money coming out of this wallet right here. And I'm trying to increase the amount of credits. That's the money going into my household. Y'all with me? That allows you to live well. All right. Now, um, so going back here, what, what I want you guys to see is on your phones. On your phones, you could, you could have a future goal in mind right here with time value of money and understand how much you have to save monthly to get to that goal. You could be getting out of college, getting your first job, and buying a home, and instead of having to, you could still call the mortgage person and say, hey, how much is my payment going to be? But you can identify, based on your budget, how much it's going to cost you to pay for that home if you just understand the interest rate, right? 
Uh, in that same loan calculator, I'm going to go back one last time, but we're going to pretend like we are buying a vehicle, right? So I'm going to do this, and then I'll open it up for Q&A. Um, so, so for clarity, what I'm doing is I'm shifting from time value of money to the loan calculator. Where am I shifting to? All right. And we're pretending like we're buying a car, right? I'm um, thinking about a car interest rate right now. I'm thinking about a car payment time frame. No, I know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to hit him with the question in a second. I just want to, I'm just thinking about what I want to put in. Um, let's do this. All right, so we got a car, and that car is $25,000. Um, the, <laughs> the interest rate, which today's interest rate is 6%, and it's five years. First person. 483 right over there. Hey, Joel right there. 483. Thank you, thank you, 483. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right there because uh, I really wanna just utilize this remaining amount of time. Any question that's on your chest, ask me, like I said, I'm 54 years old, 30 years out of the 54 years I was a financial advisor. I really help people crunch numbers. So it's a fun job because as you can tell, like when I'm not messing up up here, I like people, I love this. I don't even feel like I'm working because I get to talk to people about money. Question. Have I accumulated generational wealth? Uh, absolutely, yes. So I've got rental property in Antioch, I've got um, a house in Arenda, I own six cars. Uh, and the reason why I own it is I didn't feel like putting my kids in car payments. So my son drives my truck, my daughter drives my slug bug, et cetera. Yes. What made me want to become a financial advisor? That's a great question. Um, I really, so two things, I'm, I, and I'm going to be completely transparent. Um, as a young person, so they call us financial advisors. As a young person, the job is called a stockbroker. Uh, the, the, uh, some of the old heads in here might remember that term. It was called a stockbroker. So stockbrokers were people that just helped people buy and sell stocks and do investments. As I got older, it really, I'm, I'm hearing chatter. Okay, what are y'all talking about? Okay, all right. Okay, real quick, thank you. Um, so, as a financial advisor, it really transformed in me to help people out. And uh, what, the, what the change was, is I went to a professional development program about 21 years ago, and the gentleman said, before I could get into my course, pretend like you won the lottery, you still decide to be a financial advisor. And a lot of us are like, Psh, I, I quit, I'm retired. You say, no, no, just write a paper on why you want to do this job if you're rich as hell. Excuse my language. Why do you, 
And so I started, and, and, and that exercise really helped me because it got me in touch with why I want to do this job outside of money. Great. Let me give you 20 bucks on that. Great question. I'm going to give you the mic. I got a question back here for you, uh, Mr. Frank. I'm over, I'm over here. There it is. All right. So can you say your name, what school you came from, and then ask your question, please? My name is Cyril, and the school I go to is from Hercules. When do you think is the best time to invest? When is the best time to invest? Um, excellent question, by the way. So investing, what I recommend anyone, just like anything, if you're doing an exercise program, a lot of people do this, what I call, you know, starting on certain dates, like, they wait until the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year to start the exercise program, right? I think that's crazy. The best time is right now, meaning that uh, when I go to 24-hour fitness, like say January 3rd, I can't even like get on a bench press because everybody's in the weight room, right? And then what happens by like January 29th? Half the people are gone, right? So the best time would be now. The other thing to that is there's something called, who asked that question? All right, that, that's a good question, you, you can get something on that. That's a good question. So there's a program called Dollar Cost Averaging, right? Because the stock market is, shh, real quick, real quick. Because the stock market is going up and down, if you invest monthly, sometimes you invest in the stock market here, you invest here, you're not stuck investing all in one area. So best time is to start now, but also do it monthly. Joel, I got something for that question. Next question. Yes, sir. I have another per one right here. OK. Can you say your name, school, question? Uh, my name is Josaria, and I go to DA. Uh, uh, I was wondering, um, it's kind of like a two-part question. Uh, is there a way to estimate like when interest rates go are going to increase or decrease? So it's like interest rates are high or low now. In like two years, it'll either be, I can estimate that it's gonna be high or low. And so it's like, I'm gonna save my money until then to get whatever, like house. But is there a way to estimate um, if interest rates are gonna go up and down? And what's high? Like, is 6% high, is 12% high, is 4% high? All right, I'm, I'm gonna come over there and that answer your question. question. <laughs> great question. <laughs> all right, uh, somebody, who, who asked that first question? My guy right here. Okay, all right, here we go. Um, so, just, just one, just one. <laughs> okay, so your question was this. Um, when is the best, so there's certain things you could take advantage, so I'm gonna answer the question this way. You're welcome, uh, bless you. When interest rates are high, right, it's a good time to keep money on deposits because people in the bank right now, they're making somewhere between four to five and a half percent on their money in the bank. About a year or two ago, that same person was making less than a quarter of a percent. You with me? Rule of 72, what if you're making 4% uh, a year, how long does it take to double? Rule of 72, who's listening? Rule of 72, I talked about it earlier. If you're making 4% a year, how long does it take to double? Huh? Who said 18? Right over there, okay. You're paying attention. Pass this down. Don't let it stop. Make, make sure, keep, keep it moving. Pass it down. Okay, so. Pass it down. Pass it pass down. It down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so let me, let me come back to answer your question. So to answer your question, keep it, keep it moving, keep it moving. All right, thank you. To answer your question, uh, when interest rates are high, money, it's a good time to lock in money on deposits. When interest rates are low, it's a good time to borrow money to buy a house and lock in, right? Uh, now the last thing, and I'm advising investment clients to do this now, um, how many people know what the interest rate is for a house today? Eight percent, yeah, yeah, okay. I already broke you off, but yes. Good, 8%, 8%. Uh, so it's right now between seven, that's, a, that's huh? <laughs> Did I hook you up already? I, I was your sister, okay, there we go. All right, okay, eight, so, so she, hey, she's paying attention. She's correct. 
If you go to the bank and say, hey, I want to get a, a loan for my house, it's between 7.5% and 8%, depending on if it's Bank of America or Wells Fargo, right? Now, that's terrible, but the good thing about buying a house now is this. If you buy a house at a high interest rate, does that help or hurt the price? Aha. Uh -huh. Why does it hurt the price? This man is spot on. Okay. Can you repeat what he said? Because it's you. You use a lot of money to buy everything. Think. So what he said is spot on. You use a lot of money right now at eight percent to buy a house, right? So what am I telling? What am I telling my clients? You could still buy a house today, right? Watch this. You could buy a house today. You might suffer for a year or two at a high interest rate. But because you're paying a high interest rate on the house today, what's happening to the prices of the house today? It's cheaper because when interest rates were 3%, everybody lined up to buy a house, right? So when interest rates were 8%, people are like, ah, I'm cool. They're, they're not trying to buy a house. So it's, a, it's an amazing time to buy a house, and here's why. You could refinance the rate. You guys remember that word, refinance? You can refinance the rate. Could you refinance the price? No. You can't come back and be like, no, nah, you know what? I bought that house for like 900. I think, let me go ahead and buy it for 700. Or You can't do that. Could you do that with the rate? Absolutely. We, All right, next question. We only question. have room for about two more questions. We got two more questions. Two more questions. I have one back here. And then I have my guy right here. Are you ready to ask your question? You look and very nervous. Keep, keep asking questions, but I only have hundreds left, so I'm not parting with those. All right, I'll, I'll take you up on that. <laughs> um, can you say your name, your school, and then ask your question, please? Um, I'm Teresa. I go to El Cerrito High School. And my uh, question was, uh, what's the maximum debt to hold, hold on one second. Shh. Two things, if we can keep the, the noise down. And actually, hey, let's pretend like we're on a playground. Talk to me. Go ahead. What's the maximum debt to income ratio you should have to maintain a financial stability? What's the maximum debt to income ratio you should have to maintain financial stability? Wow, that is uh sheesh. That's a nice one. That is an amazing question. Okay. That's good. So the first of all, do you guys understand debt to income ratio? Okay, it's this simple. If you're making $100,000 a year and your debt is $50,000 a year, what is your debt to income ratio? No, so, so you're making $100,000 a year, your debt's $50,000. What is your debt to income ratio? 50%, right? So that, that's, a very, that's a very good question. Um, the, so what I would say is this, is... When we do a home, we like to see a debt-to-income ratio at about 40%, right? So that means that if you are, you make $10,000 a month, we want your credit cards and mortgages and stuff to be like at, um, you have your, we want, we want your, um, all your debts that you're paying out to be at about $4,000 on that $10,000. Not much more, if you start getting over 50%, that's no good. So what's debt to income ratio? So, yeah, so that's, that's debts against your income. That is an excellent question. Next this, question. This is the last question we gotta get this to our last next session, question. which okay, is a breakout. You, you did not get a chance to ask a question, go ahead. Oh. All right, All right. okay. Let's, oh. Oh. Let's give them two questions. We'll go here and here, this is it, okay. You, you, you'll still get, to, go ahead. So how do you think, wait, what do you think is the best way that people should set up for themselves after college, like financially? Like how do you think we should set up for ourselves after college? Okay, oh God, you know, I wish I had non-hundreds I can, okay, that's a good question. Uh, so 
Simple. The, the question is, what's the best way to set yourself up financially? So one of the reasons why I did that whole calculate yourself to success is my barber, who I just went to at 8 o'clock right now, uh, he, I helped him buy his first house. And first thing he asked me is, Joe, what's your minimum? I'm like, 250000 He's like, man, one of these days I'm going to come see you. I'm like, no, no, no. Start right now. So what I got him to do, at the time, I was paying him $25 a week for a haircut. I said, look, I'm going to start paying you in investments. I'm not going to give you $2,500 a week. I opened up a Wells Fargo investment account, which was averaging about 8%. On the first of the month, I put in $100. We had an automatic investment that went from his checking account into the investment like on the third, fourth, or fifth. Every month, he was saving. And what he says, I have, he calls them heads. I'm start, instead of saving one head, I saved two, three, four heads. In about three or four years later, he started ratcheting up his investments. He's a homeowner today, right? So don't feel like I gotta have this big I, I got to have perfection to start. Start wherever you're at. So if my barber could start at $100 a month, you could start, and, and investment companies now have been lowering their minimums. So learn and understand investments and start now. Did that answer your question? Okay. Actually, you had last. last I want to respect uh, Joelle. And thank you guys for putting up with my messing up on the, that was crazy, that's silly. Go ahead. Um, when is the best time to start building credit, and what are the best ways to start building credit? Okay, so when is the best time to start building credit, and when is the best way? So I'm going to say this. Remember this. If you don't remember anything, if something is important to you, if something is important to you, there's never been a better time than right now. Right? When? Right. Now. So if credit is important to you, there are a couple of ways you could build credit. Um, if you're a student, you're not working, I don't recommend getting a bunch of credit cards and getting in debt. But the ability to buy something small and pay it off builds credit. But you don't want to be buying something that you don't have the money for, because in the pursuit of building credit, you can end up messing your credit because you get overextended, right? So um, once you hit 18, particularly like in college or whatever, you can get a college credit card. But again, don't buy anything that you don't have the money for. All right? Hey, thank you, guys. I, I wish I had more time. I'll be around. Um, Joel right here has my cell phone, so if you guys want to learn anything else about finances, you want to come to Wells Fargo and see me, hit up Joel. Oh, one last thing. One last thing real quick, real quick. Real quick, shh, real quick, real quick. I need everybody. This date is not set in stone yet. I got to run it by the Contra Costa people, so please don't quote this. We're eyeing Thursday or Saturday, April 27th. As a career expo, we did a career expo with Contra Costa College. They are amazing hosts. They have a lot of platforms. I was amazed with their with their with their programs and everything else. So, how do we? Uh, they decide to go to a talk to their counselor. And okay. Yeah. We. So let's. This is in the works. We're we're, we're going to nail down a date in late April. Aside from working with uh, Wells Fargo, I also belong to a group called the 100 Black Men in the Bay Area. And the whole purpose of the career day is to get you guys in front of the people, the areas of interest, the areas of interest that you guys are interested in, provide the professionals that are going to give you guys information on those areas. Y'all with me? So more to come. Uh, thank you guys again. Let's give it up one more time for Joe Frank. How many people want to buy a house in here? Hopefully every hand goes up. I don't know if you guys just know, but he just dropped a lot of knowledge on you, showed you how to buy a house, how much it's going to cost to buy a house. He also told you he had six cars. I'm trying to tell you he's not regular. So please take up the opportunity to get his contact information. He's definitely underplaying what he does, what he is. 
I was told one time he was throwing a party at his house. I was invited, I missed it. But the feedback I received is somebody was driving for a little bit of time, you know, trying to get to the front of the house. I'm just telling you, he is a big deal. So I really do appreciate Joe Frank coming out and taking his time out to talk to us and to, and to uh, excuse me, drop knowledge on everybody in this room. You guys ready for the next workshop? I know you're tired of sitting in this room as well, so we're going to mix it up a little bit. Can I have all my fellas stand up, please? All the fellas, can you stand up, please? All my fellas, can you stand up, please? Is that like a question hand or? Not now, but I'll get it for you. I'll make sure to get Joe Franks. So all my fellas, I want you guys to walk on down, follow my group of ambassadors with their hands on, hands up. They're going to walk you to your next breakout session. All of my fellas, please stand up and follow the group. We got something special for y'all in Fireside Hall. I know y'all about to get hungry, so we got a quick workshop for you, and then we'll have lunch very soon, so that is coming. Bear with us. Move anywhere you want to. Are all my fellas still in the room? Are they still walking out? We'll give them a little bit more time, all my fellas. Where's the presenters at? Uh, oh, I see him. My bad. I got you. You ready? Okay. Where's Dr. Uh, Nicole at? All right. Now that all my fellas are out the room, ladies, please make yourselves comfortable. If you are sitting in an awkward seat, feel free to take one of the fellas' seat. If you are sitting all the way in the back of the room, feel free to come on down and get a little closer, please. Please move on down and get a little closer. All my people right here, you don't have to sit in this row anymore. If you want to stay in that row right there, that's completely fine. All right, ladies, are you ready? Can I have your attention? What y'all do? If you hear my voice clap once, y'all be doing that? Oh, okay, I guess y'all do that then. All right. So once again, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. We wanted to make sure, though, that we gave you the opportunity to get some knowledge dropped on you from the leadership at Contra Costa College. I have three special guests that's going to come. So please give them your undivided attention. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. Don't be afraid to get personal. That is the point of that. That's why we got all the guys out of here. I'm going to step out of here as well, so I will not be in here, just the FYI. But I want you guys to give it up. I'm going to introduce them all because it's three of them. So let me get through them all before y'all start clapping, you know. For Ms. Bianca Snowden. Dr. Nicole Kelly, did I say that right? And Dean Ashley Phillips. So I really do wanna just say I appreciate them for stepping up. 
we started this off as the African-American male leadership, but we realized we was doing something wrong and we wasn't including the right people, so we had to correct that and get it right. They stepped up to be leaders on our campus to take on this role. So let's give a round of applause as I pass the mic to Bianca. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Happy Friday. It's Friday, right? Okay, happy Friday. Welcome to Contra Costa College. My name is Bianca Snowden. I am the Senior Executive Assistant to the Vice President of Student Services here at Contra Costa College. Um, we're gonna pretty much kind of share our journeys. I want you guys to ask a lot of questions. I'm gonna pretty much kind of share how I got to this point where I am now. Dr. Nicole is also. Um, we have a few questions for you as well. We have a video that we also wanna share with you in the very beginning. Um, but shortly after the video, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my journey and then Dr. Nicole Kelly is gonna start off with her journey. All right? Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Kelly. I'm an academic and student services manager. Um, again, everything that Bianca said, that's what we're gonna do today and I look forward to talking to you. So start to write down those questions, think about them. Welcome. Sorry, y'all, bear with us, I'm sorry. Okay. A little technical difficulty. Oh. Is it? Good morning, good morning, everyone. Have a seat. This is strictly for you, young ladies, other, all. Okay, I'm Miss Cookie, and after this, after this, you are to go down and they're gonna serve you lunch, okay? So that is my public announcement. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cookie. Unfortunately, I, I ran out of time and I was unable to put her on, but after the show, she set this room on fire with a performance for my Arsenio Up Close app. And at that moment, at that very moment, I decided to have her on the show tonight to start it off. For you all, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ernestine Johnson. They say I'm not the average black girl because I'm so well-spoken, poised, full of etiquette, a white man's token. You know, I remember my ex's mother telling me I didn't know how I was going to react when he brought home a black girl, but I like you because you talk so white. Well, when did me talking right equate to me talking white? They say I'm not the average black girl. No, 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 not the average black girl because the pigment of my skin is just a shade lighter than that black girl over there. You know the black girl over there, the black girl with the nappy hair, the black girls whose elbows can't skip a day without lotion, whose hearts and heads are filled up with self-hate and bottled up emotion, the cocoa brown girls who have to face society every day and be tough, because no matter how good they straighten their hair, their good is still not good enough. Oh, see, luckily for me, see, I don't fall in that category. See, they say I'm not the average black girl because I speak with so much class and I'll have too much but just enough ass and not too much but just enough pizzazz. You know, just, just a little bit of attitude. Cause you don't want to come off as one of those average black girls and come off as rude. You know, popping their gum and shaking their neck. Yeah, cause those black girls get like no respect. But see, luckily for me, see, I get a pass. Cause the melanin in my skin matches that brown paper bag. And my father, brother, and men that I date pants don't sag. And when I speak, my tongue pronounces every syllable. 
and the combed part down the middle of my hair is naturally visible. Oh, oh, it must be a weave, she must be mixed because we all know the average black girl ain't got that good <laughs> Or when I walk into a room full of white men, they all stare. It must be the long lengths of my unaverage black girl hair. See, see, they say I'm not the average black girl because I corrected the professor when he used the word conversate, converse. The word is converse, and in case you didn't get the memo, there are now eight, not nine planets in the universe. And when you're watching the numbers on your stocks move up and down, remember Oklahoma and a small town where one of the first Wall Streets was a black Wall Street that got mysteriously burned down? Oh, they say I'm not the average black girl. Well, let's flip the script and rewind this and repaint the lines that had been blurred over time because the average black girl that I know, see, the average black girl that I know made 19 trips through the Underground Railroad to free the slaves sat on segregated buses, refused to get up and pave new waves. See, the average black girl that I know, the average black girl that I know were Egyptian queens like Hatshepsut and Nidocris who were ruling dynasties and whole armies of men. Excuse me why I set fire to this poem on my pen because I am tired. Tired of the stereotypes black girls have fallen into because of American mentality. Oh, but not half as tired as Ella Baker, Diane Nash, Septima points that Clark, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, Miss Fannie Lou Hamer. Daisy Bates, Anna Arnold Hedgeman, and Dorothy Height are far more tired than I am. But do you think the ones who say I'm not the average black girl even give a damn? No. So pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. Pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliment. It's just the average black girl that I know. The average black girl that I know had courage that surpassed her every fear and fought for justice and equality year after year. So as I construct these words, pardon me as I shed a tear because I'm not half the black girl she was. I am not half the black girl she was. See, there's a minor clause. See, she was out there fighting, breaking, and changing laws. So I bow down to my black queen standing in the merit of her work. And as America's society continuously throws these supercilious words unto me, I say no. I'm not the average black girl. I can only aspire to be. Thank you. That's Ernest Johnson. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching the video. How did you guys feel about the video? All right. Yes, the lights back on. I need everybody to see me. All right. So. My name again is Bianca Snowden. I don't know if anybody was here last year for the symposium. If you were, please raise your hand. Okay, well, some of you guys probably already have heard my story, but I'm sorry you're gonna hear it again. <laughs> um, but it's a great story, okay? So my name again is Bianca Snowden. This is pretty much a short depiction of pictures of my life journey. Um, I am from Berkeley, California, born and raised. Um, I decided that I wanted to uh, go to school and do diff all different types of stuff. So I was in all different types of sports growing up. I did track, I did soccer, I did basketball, I did it. You name it, I did it. Um, so I was very athletic in growing up. Um, going beyond that, we'll skip to high school. Um, this is my high school picture, this is how I went to prom with. Um, obviously, you can see the old school hairstyles, very old. Uh, um, but I graduated in 2006, um, and at that time, a lot of people were going away to school or not going away to school. And I had the opportunity to, in high school, to go to two programs. So I went to a program at UC Berkeley um, at the Haas School of Business, and then I was also in a program through Sacramento, uh, like an ASU program, basically, for high school students. So I had the opportunity to go different routes as far as schooling. Um, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't know where I wanted to be as far as choice-wise because a lot of my friends were going to school and then some of them weren't. So I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I got to figure this out. So luckily I was blessed enough to go on two college tours. So I went on like a UC college tour then I went on an HBCU college tour. So both college tours were amazing. Um, however, for me, the HBCU route is the route that I chose. So instead of me going straight to school, I actually wound up going to a community college. So I went to Solano Community College for two years. And then I wind up transferring because I was like, I'm not staying here anymore. Then a lot of stuff was going on in my family. I had a couple of family um, 
deaths, like murders and stuff like that, which I'm sure a lot of you can probably uh, can acknowledge or you know that you guys have probably have gone through gone through that or going through that, right? So I decided to make a decided to make a decision and transfer. So the school that I chose, I went to Texas Southern University in Houston, Texas. Okay? Best life decision I feel like I've ever made in my entire life. Okay? Um, it was such a great thing for me to walk on that campus and see everybody look like me. I um, was born and raised in Berkeley. Um, I mean, if you've been to Berkeley, Berkeley Berkeley's kind of like a melting pot. There's a little bit of everybody. So I was raised around white, Asian, black, Latino, you name it. So going to Texas Southern for me, I was like, oh my God, everybody looks like me. I went to Taco Bell. The lady at Taco Bell was black. I was like, wow. Like, you know, this, this is a culture shock for me, but I was just like, wow, like this is different. But um, it was a great life experience for me, great life decision um, that I made. I stayed there for four years and I wound up actually staying in Texas after I graduated. I graduated in 2012 and then I wound up staying because it was cheap to live in Houston. But um, I stayed out there for like almost 10 years and I recently moved back here about four or five years ago and I, wound, I landed here. So my journey as far as getting here was great because I always knew I wanted to give back and work with people. I have my major is in sociology and I have a minor in administration of justice, so I've doubled. But I knew I always wanted to work with people and work with the youth because I feel like um, us young people, um, a lot of us don't have um, somebody to talk to or just a, a, outlet, a simple outlet. So I always wanted to be that person for other youth or for other women, men, it doesn't matter. So I wound up back here and I work in student services and I love it. Um, I couldn't ask for a better job if that makes sense. Um, I work with people who look like me, who talk like me. Um, so it's a great experience. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up because I don't wanna take up too much time. I know you guys might have questions for me, but do we want to do questions now or we want to wait? Okay, I'm going to let Dr. Nicole go next. If you have questions for me, let me know um, about if you have questions about the transfer experience, my HBCU experience. I know I was very brief, but I just wanted to keep it as far as time wise. So if you guys have detailed questions, I am more than happy to answer them for you. Okay? All right, thank you. Thank you to my colleague, Bianca. Again, my name is Nicole Kelly, and my story is um, it's a little different. Uh, I grew up in Richmond, California, which I know we're in San Pablo, but Richmond is very close by. And uh, I, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17 because it was just a lot going on when I was growing up. And so I needed to move out. I was on my own. It was somewhat of a earth shaking experience. Um, and my cousin saw that I was kind of hanging out with the wrong crowd and said, why don't you go to community college with me? So I ended up at College of Alameda. I could have come to Contra Costa College, but because I would have saw everyone from my um, high school, I decided to go to College of Alameda. And what I can say about community college in particular is that it introduced me to all of the information that I didn't know. It sparked a certain type of um, curiosity in me for knowledge and I really wanted to know more. And I think one thing that we don't talk about a lot in a community college that is different from a four-year university is that there's a magical space, there's magic that happens in a classroom because there's an intergenerational um, intergenerational classroom. You have people in the class that are 17, they're in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, their 50s. Some people are coming back uh, after retirement, they're starting a new career. And 
I don't know if you all know this, but when you walk into a classroom, you're not like an empty sponge. You're not getting everything from your teacher. You come in with your own knowledge. You come in from knowledge from your parents, from your cousins, from your own experiences. So you're sharing those experiences with others. And I think that was uh, one big thing about um, community college that sparked that interest in me. And then I decided, I was working at Craig and Auto Parts, and they weren't paying me enough. And I said, I need to do something else with my life. My friends, my closest friends were all getting pregnant, and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. So <laughs> it's the truth. So I decided, to, um, I decided to go to college, and I went to my mom's house. I wrote her a letter, because again, I moved out of my mom's house, but I needed her, and I needed her help. And I went, uh, I ended up going to Southern. I kind of landed at Southern. I could tell you a lie and tell you some deep story about how I chose the HBCU, but truthfully, at Richmond High, they had an HBCU seminar, and uh, the lady at Southern was really nice to me. She was like Miss Cookie. She was like, come on, baby, come on down. You know, come on down to Southern. And so I applied, I got in, and I transferred. And like Bianca said, it was a life-changing experience for me. Um, and just like Bianca said, it was culture shock because I grew up in Richmond. You know, we have African Americans, black folks, we have Mexicans, we have uh, uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, we have so much diversity here. And Louisiana was literally black and white. And um, that's not a bad thing, but it was just very different. And I remember, this is how old I am, I was in a freshman dorm and they had all of our like our classroom um, assignments, you know, right now you pull up your schedules online, I think Power School. Um, for us, our stuff was printed out on the walls, and so I had to find my schedule where my classes would be printed out on the wall. And shamefully, I say this, but I just want you all to know, because I grew up in Richmond, so my experience was different. The only thing I could think of, it was like this surreal experience where people were like around me and everyone was talking and their accents were really strong. All I heard was say bruh, say bruh, you know, like they were just running through the halls. And uh, I was thinking all of these black folks in here, no one is fighting. And that was like the first thing where I thought, wow, and down south, black folks are together. It's a different environment. And it was very, very um, shocking to me in such a great way. I learned how to cook in Louisiana. I learned respect for my elders in a sense in Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's different, you know, it's, it's like the, they take you back home. Um, and I decided to pursue a degree in political science. I wanted to really be in international relations um, because I really enjoyed uh, everything international until my history professor uh, gave me an assignment, uh, a um, extra credit assignment to go see the story of Emmett Till. Anybody know the story of Emmett Till? So the education system is improving because I had never heard of him. I had never heard of his story. And after hearing his story, it changed the trajectory of my life and I couldn't believe that this was happening in my own community. Um, and so I came back home, I got involved in my church and um, there's so much more to that story, but that is kind of like some pivotal moments that really changed my life. And so I can spend the last couple of minutes tell you, telling you about uh, the pictures that I chose. So the picture on the left, that's me and my mom. Um, I would say that travel is really important. That was a summer in New York. I spent all of my summers in New York. I'm telling y'all, that's the cutest picture up there with the Michael Jackson. I love my, my younger self. I just wish I could have told her some other things <laughs> when I was younger. And then this picture, uh, again, back to travel, I joined this program called World Teach. And I spent a summer, even though that says Bienvenidos a Panama, I spent a summer in Costa Rica teaching English to Costa Rican students. And I, they have a, um, a uh, holiday called Quinceañeras, which is 15 days off. And so I took those 15 days to visit my family. My mother is Panamanian, to visit my family on a countryside. I know my mother's, my matriarchal line, but I don't know my father's, uh, my grandfather's line, and they're Costa Rican. And so it was just such an amazing experience. And World Teach, uh, they made us write a letter to ourselves that we would get three months after the, um, after it was over and I told myself that I would, I told myself in the letter that I better not be 
at this beep job by the time I get this letter and sure enough I wasn't and so because I was working in local government and that's when I made the transition from government to um, to education um, and then that's just a picture at SF State another quick story when you're in school you're doing the work and when you cross the line to graduate from high school even though you feel like oh it's high school is the end when you walk across that stage there is nothing else like it because I'm like you know I'm pretty introverted I don't like all that hoopla I don't really necessarily want to walk across the stage but there's a different feeling you get because you know at this moment that you have uh, completed this accomplishment for yourself and as I was walking I'm late always late I was walking uh, at the San Francisco Giants um, stadium that's where our graduation was I'm just walking like oh my god I'm gonna be late again I can't find my people I can't find my class and as I was walking there was a group of boys they happened to be white boys and it was a group of young kids they were graduates too and as I'm walking through he said wait 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 y'all watch she has her doc she has her um her master she has a hood get out her way and then all of a sudden I kind of perked up like oh I did do that I didn't realize that I really accomplished this big goal and I'm one of a small percent of people in the US and especially in the black community who has their degree has their master's degree so it's a big thing um, and then the picture over there my parents got they uh, divorced when I was a baby and that's a picture of my dad my mom I really appreciate she always used to really force me to go to different events um, that were part of my dad's family and so that was his retirement party anyone in the military would know that a chief master sergeant is huge and so it kind of reconciled the emotional piece of me to say that my father wasn't there because he devoted his life to the country so that's a important picture for me and we look just alike uh, so I always like to show that picture and then finally I think one of the most amazing educational experiences that I've ever had was at Mills College I received it says keep calm and finish your PhD but I got an EDD so an EDD is a doctorate of education they have a PhD thank you Thank you so much. They have a PhD, which is a doctorate of philosophy, an EDD, a doctorate in education, an MD, a doctorate in medicine. And so um, just writing the dissertation, I'm a writer, you know, not necessarily I'm out here speaking to you all, but I love to write. And it, it kind of awakened something in my spirit. And I did a, um, my dissertation was on intergenerational communication and knowledge production between women of African descent. And when I say women of African descent, it's because my mother is from Panama, right? Uh, my, my grandmother, my father is African American, so all of these pieces are within me. I was born in Southeast, Southeast Asia. I have parts of my family that are from the Caribbean side, Jamaican and um, Trinidadian. Um, and so there's a lot of that in me, and so I was very curious about the ways in which we all communicate to one another. And I have a, a lot of appreciation for black women just in general. So um, that's my long story that I just shared. I tried to keep it short. Thank you. All right, who has questions? Okay, I'm gonna go with you first in the white hat. Yeah, you girl. <laughs> Oh, can you repeat the question? Oh, okay, oh, well, me, oh, okay, so, duh. So her question was, um, since I attended Texas Southern University, she asked me what were the pros and cons of attending there. So I would say, f from my experience, your experience will probably be a little bit different just because they got a little bit more money now. Um, I would say housing was a little bit difficult for me, honestly, when I first got there because there were so many people coming from California and, and other places in general where when I got to school, I didn't have a place to stay. So my, my mom being the person that she is, I got a place to stay at the, by the end of the day. So at the end of the day, you know, just make sure you're advocating for yourself in any, in any shape or form, especially when you're getting into school. Um, I would say that was a con, uh, a pro. Um, 
it's honestly just being able to meet all these wonderful people. I, I go back for homecoming literally every year. It's like a family reunion. So a, a pro for me is just being open to just being able to meet all these wonderful people because you're going to meet lifelong people that you're going to carry by your side for the rest of your life. Like you have your high school friends, but your college friends, that's different because they're going to go with you through the mud, through a lot of stuff. Boys, your grade, school, job, a lot of stuff. So I would say those are my pros and cons. But I feel like you'll absolutely love it. You'll have a lot of fun, but make sure you do your schoolwork because it is a party city. So please, you have to also make sure you level that out because you will be partying. Next question. You had your neck hand up next. Go ahead. Oh, I loved it. I don't, I don't. I, I wouldn't have chosen anything else. I, like I said, I went both roads. I went to, I did a UC tour. So I went to UC Riverside, UC Davis, UC, all the UCs. I mean, and then I also went to Cal Berkeley in high school for the high school of business. So I kind of was on campus and I kind of was like, mm, this isn't, this isn't for me. So then when I went to the HBCU, tour, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. So I went to Clark, I went to Howard, I did, I did it all. But I never went to Texas Southern, surprisingly. So I went, I pilled, Texas Southern was a pick for me, honestly, but I never even visited before I even went there. So you have to honestly sometimes step out on faith, and I promise you, it's, it, it's a life-changing experience. Don't be afraid. And just because your friends is back there trying to make sure if they're holding you back, that ain't your friend. So you need to make sure you are surrounding yourself by like-minded people, and I feel like you'll love it. Next question. You. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you speak up for me? I can hear you. She said my experience with, as a sociology major. Um, uh, in the beginning, of course, you're taking your basic prerequisites. Um, I, for me, I loved it because I had professors that really cared about uh, sociology and the actual knowledge of it. So, I mean, I loved it personally. It just depends on if that's really what you want to do because sometimes you can get in the field or we get in our heads where we want to go a certain degree route and we want to get a certain job, but sometimes that's not how it aligns. So you have to make sure in your head, just because you might go a sociology route or any route for that matter, you have to know that you're willing to face adversity and you can do anything. I got three minutes left, so next question, two, sorry, two. I'm gonna be real quick, you right here. It's okay, don't be shy, girl, speak up. The, she, the question was the, what I would have done differently during my HBCU experience. The only thing that I honestly didn't get to do, but it was also by choice, um, I wanted to join a sorority. I didn't get a chance to because uh, the sorority that was on my campus was suspended for X amount of years for some crazy stuff. So when I was graduating and they came back online and for me, it was too much of a juggle. I was working full time, like 40 hours a week, plus going to school, plus, you know, trying to live my life, my best life. So for me, I. I couldn't do it. That would be my only con. Other than that, I had a ball. Um, you right here in the beanie. What did I? Why did I? Why did I choose to go to school? What I went to school for, and how did I stay motivated? So, like I, in the beginning, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to do journalism. I thought I wanted to be. I'm a. I'm a speaker. So I thought I was going to be like MTV News, you know, shade room, be in front, you know what I'm saying? That's what I thought I was going to do. And I could still do that, right? However, I chose a different route because I was like, ooh, I like to work with people. I like to give back. I like to, and that's why I feel like that's what motivated me to stay in that road, in that lane. And then also I have people, like I said earlier, I surrounded myself with like-minded people, right? 
everybody around me that was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that chose my degree, like we were each other's village. So like they're still my friends, like not even friends, they still family to this day. So I feel like you, as long as you keep like-minded people and you also have to motivate yourself also to just to get pushed through because you can do it. Because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be thrown at you in college that you're going to be like, whew, I don't know if I could dodge that. But yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, yes, dodge boys, but just, just be smart, ladies. Please be smart. Okay, I have a last question, and then I'm going to have to say this quote, and that's it. Oh. Uh, who? It's lunchtime? Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can, can catch me outside. <laughs> um, but this is the quote, I'd rather regret the risk that didn't work out than the chances that didn't take it all. By Simone Bile. Thank you.